the the talk will be uh, the same as uh, the, the talk I gave in Oxford in September, but it seems that uh, not many people are are uh, from this audience, so it will be all right, except for Erochi. I guess I, I mean, knew it and didn't come. <laughs> so um, so the, the talk will be about, um, so, so the title saying this, uh, so I will define all of this in a, in a minute, but uh, before that, uh, let me give the motivation, which will also say what the talk is about. Uh, so the, the motivation for that work, which is a uh, joint work with uh, Pierre-Louis Montaga from, uh, from Montpellier, where I am as well, so is um, it's about the classification of low dimensional Fano variety, Fano manifold, say. Um, so this part is, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of well known and well uh, motivated already. It's one of the major uh, results in, in complex algebraic geometry. So everything is always seen, it's like stated already. So uh, in, in complex algebraic geometry, uh, major result is the classification of uh, a final threefolds by um, Iskowski, Manning, uh, Mori, and Mukai. Uh, full, who gave a full uh, classification of Fano threefolds up, up to, let's say, up to the deformation. And there are 105 deformation classes. And this is, this uh, result is a, uh, fundamental for our, our understanding of the uh, higher dimensional Fano, even complex manifolds. And uh, this is uh, threefold, so really low dimensional. Uh, of course, surfaces are known in, uh, in, uh, in, in one dimension one, there's only the, the projective line. And then uh, one may ask about uh, fourfolds, and that's, that's uh, a uh, very big uh, problem and uh, still open, uh, but but in the UK there are several persons in, interested in that problem. Uh, so so my goal is not not really. I mean I will talk about fan of all folds, but uh, with an added condition and and an added motivation. So. I will not only be interested in the classification of Fano manifolds and actually not really uh, interested in that, but of Fano manifolds with a, a group action. And here I mean really a, a, a big group action, which is a, a, say a reductive complex group action. So I will, uh, my result will be much more specific, but that's the, the, the kind of thing I'm interested in. And for, for Fano threefolds, um, the classification are, are among, among these, which, which one of these have uh, infinite uh, group action an action of an infinite group, this was, uh, or positive dimensional group, this was uh, obtained by, uh, by Chelsov. Uh, Prijakovsky and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Shramov uh, a few years ago, but not so long ago. And and, uh, and for uh, for four folds, uh, and uh, to give an example of uh, what you can do when you add a group action, the for example, if you look at toric Fano, 
four folds, they are classified. So in contrast with the, the general case, and they were classified by uh, Vatirev and uh, 1999 and uh, and uh, Sato same time with uh, I think a, a small mistake in Batirev which is uh, solved in uh, Sato's paper. So for Turek there are we here I don't remember the number of these we made infinite group action but there are many and uh, for Turek fan of four there are 124. Uh, different uh, toric fan of four folds. And I'm, when I say a manifold or fourfold, I, I'm implying, uh, at least for now, I'm implying smooth. Okay. So these are uh, motivating uh, examples of results in the literature and why why care about uh, group actions on, on Fano manifolds. Um, let me give quick uh, motivations. Um, first one is, uh, is uh, like related to that toric example when you have uh, manifolds with uh, with group action, so with uh, symmetries, they are easier uh, easier to classify. That's a first reason. That's why toric are are done and not the general case. And uh, and uh, easier to classify. And you can, uh, I mean, even. Finding some object to classify these is 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 not uh, is not uh, easy. So in the in the case of toric, uh, toric manifolds are classified by combinatorial data, which makes it makes the problem uh, I mean it makes it possible to attack the problem with a uh, I mean, uh, uh, you have a method. I mean, you have a, you know what you're looking for first. That that's already something. And then another motivation is uh, so Fano manifolds are very interesting in themselves, but you, you can be interested in in other kinds of uh, uh, of problems. And for example, you can be interested in in pairs where X is Fano and D is a divisor. And then, uh, so even if you're working on Fano manifold, the, the thing that will be uh, important in, in terms of uh, symmetries, the, the group which is important there is not the group of automorphism of X, but it's rather the, the group of uh, automorphisms of X preserving the, the divisor D, and it's usually uh, a strict uh, inclusion. So you you are. It, it makes sense to to consider various possible group actions and to to know all the possible meaningful group actions that you have on X. That's what I'm uh, uh, trying to motivate here. Okay, so I will be interested really in. Uh, classifying not uh, not the X, but the X equipped with an action of a group. Oh. So I will now state the, the main results, which is which will be anyway uh, as not so precise. In I mean, it's a, it's a classification result with many cases, so I cannot definitely cannot give the list. I will give uh, um, insight about this. But before that, I must uh, define the, the objects of interest. 
so as the, the, the title says, I'm interested in spherical manifolds, which are or spherical varieties. So these are a normal algebraic variety. Uh, X is a normal algebraic variety of, over C as always, which is equipped with a regular action of a complex connected reductive group. And uh, so one say that this is, uh, is spherical, so either I, I may say, uh, I may use it in, in several ways. I may say that the manifold X is spherical or the action of G on X is spherical. If uh, for any Borel subgroup of G, B acts on X with an open orbit. So open in, in uh, Zariski topology, so particularly it is open and dense in the, the uh, if you're interested in the, the complex uh, manifold, say if it's smooth and with the classical topology. So this is the definition of spherical variety. Um, yes, yeah, so, so we'll probably uh, see examples later. And uh, I, I, the title also mentions the small rank, so small dimension will be the dimension of the variety. But the rank, rank is a notion related to this definition of spherical variety. Uh, and uh, before defining the rank, I need to define another invariant. So let's say, uh, so if if uh, I have uh, X equal to an action of G and B a uh, fixed Borel subgroup in G, um, then the, the weight lattice for this action is the following. So it's the, usually denoted by M. It's the set of, of B weights of B eigenvectors in uh, a B module, which is, uh, the space of rational functions on X. So since X is equipped with a, an action of G, this uh, space of rational functions is also equipped with a, an action of G. I can restrict this to the action of B. And then uh, in this uh, space, I have some uh, lines which are stable under B, and then B on these lines acts by a, a character, and, and this is called the, the weight of the action of B on this line, and M is the collection of these uh, of these characters. So it's something which is included in uh, the, the group of characters of uh, B. Okay, so then the, the rank rank of the action is uh, is uh, is exactly the the rank of this weight lattice as a, a free abelian group that's actually free abelian group. So as a, or as a yeah. So actually, so M is uh, isomorphic to some Z to the power 
rank of uh, I mean the rank. Yeah, that's so that is the definition of the rank. This is a, a number associated to to the action, and uh, one can uh, show, and this will uh, come back later, that uh, the rank is between uh, zero and the dimension of x. So these are the, the basic definitions for spherical varieties and in the statement there's also so Frano, so I, I only put this very quickly because I expect people are familiar with this in the algebraic geometry seminar. So that's if the anticanonical line bundle is is ample, so say Cartier and ample. Anyway. I I will consider rather smooth varieties, not exactly smooth. So next definition is, is this. I will consider locally factorial varieties. If so that is if uh, locally factorial is when um, any wide divisor on X is actually Cartier. So now that I have recalled uh, these notions, I can state the, the theorem. The theorem is a classification of locally factorial Fano spherical varieties um, of uh, small dimension and rank. So but the, the, let me write it. Classification of, uh, of uh, X with an action of G such that X is locally factorial Fano. Uh, G complex connected reductive group as before. Um, Dimension of X is at most four, and uh, the action is uh, spherical, is spaceful and spherical. And the rank of this action, as defined uh, just before, is less than or equal to two. So that's the, the the content of the the main content of the paper. But um, uh, together with this, and actually as a tool to achieve this, is the the associated uh, combinatorial data for each of these action. which is uh, something uh, analogous to, to the theory of toric varieties. So you have uh, like a colored fans, which plays the role of fan, classical fans in the, in the theory of ter toric varieties. And and then we also compute from this the several uh, invariants of the the manifolds the x or the varieties x, uh, like the Picard number, the the anticanonical degree. Let me say the volume. And uh, we also check if they are case stable or not. So the case stability or, or existence of Keter Einstein metrics, depending on what you prefer. Okay. So we do this for for, for all the the, the, the 
varieties that we classify. And so I cannot give the list for the because of the, the numbers involved. So let me give a, an idea of the numbers. So by, by dimension and rank, use this. So dimension goes from one, four, and it, uh, I'm giving all this. So of course it seems uh, not very interesting to put one, but uh, that will rise uh, the first comment and I will give several com comments about these uh, numbers. So you have the rank going from uh, zero to two in the statement. And we classify these. We obtain the, the written number of faithful spherical actions is this dimension, this rank on the locally factorial Fano manifolds. Um. Okay, so so that's that's the statement. If you, if you want to to see the a bit more about the lists, there's a a table available. Oh, let me. Should you use the the chat? Maybe um, can I put this somewhere? No, I can't. <laughs> let me write it here. But uh, text. Okay. So you can find the the list. A table with the information about these manifolds at the following uh, URL. Okay. So comments about the the these numbers. So uh, if you take all of these, I get uh, three hundred thirty-seven. Uh, manifold with, uh, varieties with group actions, um, one should straight away see that uh, it's not really, uh, th that doesn't mean that we, we find 337 different Fano manifolds of dimension less than four, because uh, look at these numbers, you have, we have two uh, one dimensional uh, such things, and that uh, there's only one one dimensional Fano manifold. So, so that's um, because you have two different face full spherical actions on P1. Um, the, one is uh, as a homogeneous varieties, and all this this whole line consists of homogeneous. Uh, manifolds, then you have the here the, the toric. So this is toric, and I'm actually, I should go on to put here a whole sub diagonal of toric manifolds. So manifolds with the action of a torus, which make it, makes it toric. So that's when the, the rank is equal to the dimension, you actually get a toric manifold. And so you can, uh, even though our result is, is, is uh, like uh, above this line, we can put more on what happens under this line, because for toric manifolds, the classification is is known. So as I wrote in the in the in the first uh, section, uh, we know that there are 124 toric manifolds of smooth Fano toric manifolds, and uh, and in dimension three, there are 18. So these numbers are known by this. Inequality here, we know that here there will be zero, 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 zero. And this is uh, 
here the unknown here that I, I can uh, comment on right now. So that's the the on the the missing part in this uh, classification of four dimensional spherical Fano varieties. So let me write stuff and not say too much. Um, Okay, so I, I commented on torque manifold. So the, the case dimension equal four rank equal to three. We did not do this, but it's a work in progress by, I guess, by uh, by uh, Gertrude, who is attending the talk, I think. Um, and uh, we expect um hundreds of uh, of examples there so that that would be that would be uh the highest number in this table should be here uh but uh yeah that, so i will talk a bit about the the methods in the in the second part of the talk but for for this uh for this case it's it's most likely the case that you one should use uh, computer assistance and I, I think that's that's the approach that uh, Gertrude is using um, so the dimension uh, one is is trivial so in can write it more explicitly even though it's it's kind of implied by what I wrote there so you have p1 equipped with an action of SL2. So I will omit omit the SL2 of C. It's always of C, whatever the group I write. And you have uh, the toric action of, uh, I mean, of C star on P1. Of course, you can uh, choose various uh, embedding of C star in the automorphism group. So that's uh, up to the classification is up to G equivariant isomorphism. Okay, it's so dimension two case is, is well known from for people working in, in, in the series of spherical varieties. And the dimension three case was actually known, but uh, probably not well known because it's it's it follows from combined uh, PhD thesis of uh, Boris Pasquier and uh, Hofshire, Johannes, that that you know. Well, and uh, so that's actually uh, one motivation for for our work. The the thesis of, of Shire contains one chapter about the classification of uh, Fano spherical threefolds, and we we try to expand this. But uh, so why it is not widely known? One reason is that this is in uh, in French. And this other one is not available online. So, and anyway, none of these results are published. So it's quite uh, not so easy to, to access. So we rewrite we, we the, the, the proof for dimension three in, in our paper. But the, the, the most, uh, the, I mean, the new part is in, in the case of dimension four. Okay, and then the, the the important caveat that I mentioned is that we do not uh, usually, in, in general, identify the underlying X. Uh, it's not easy to identify. And so we, we do not 
say in our paper when uh, if you're given two two elements of our classification when does the the underlying x is the same we do not do this in general so, so not done completely in our result Uh, but but from the computation of geometric uh, data of uh, geometric uh, yeah, data like what I mentioned in, in the theorem like that we compute the Picard number and the canonical degree and the, the case stability of these then we can uh, make several remarks like there are at least One hundred uh, seventeen different underlying x. That's among fourfold fourfolds in our theorem. There's at least uh, one hundred seventeen different underlying x among the uh, this this. Uh, Total for this is 260, and among these, at least uh, at least 42 are different non-toric, meaning uh, the the action not consider. So the underlying X does not admit a uh, structure of toric variety. You can find at least 42 among these, and at least 93 are not uh, KE, so it's always at least, at least, since we do not identify all, and at least 24 are uh, KE. Okay. So you still, you, you see that we have, uh, we do get a new, probably new uh, Fano metaphors in our classification, even though it's it's not really what we call it, uh, classify. What we really classify is just the, the pair manifold with group action. And then the final uh, comment before going into the proof is about smoothness. So. Our statement is for locally factorial. Uh, it is easier for spherical varieties to, to deal with the assumption of local factoriality rather than smoothness. Uh, but if, if, if the underlying X is toric, then, uh, oops, sorry, locally factorial I don't know what's happening is is equivalent to smoothness and there's there's a whole big uh, subclass of spherical variety which are called toroidal where you you have the same same property so for a, a whole bunch of our varieties we can say that they are actually smooth and we get that at least so from this plus uh, the explicit de description of several examples, we, we see that at least uh, 321 out of uh, 337 of our varieties are smooth. And uh, so that leaves out 16 elements. And among the, the 16, at least three are not smooth. So the only missing cases are uh, certain missing, uh, I mean, unknown, unknown uh, cases. And this is only among uh, the, the FANO, the fourfold, the dimension four. Okay. So I will now try to give um, 
an idea of the, the proof and uh, specifically one part of the proof, but maybe if, if there are questions before that, I can answer. If not, I, I go on. Okay, so um, let me give a sketch of proof. I will maybe just say it mostly uh, uh, without writing uh, and because the details come afterwards. So, but the, the important thing is there are two steps. Um, the first step is like when when you have a spherical uh, spherical varieties and actually there exists an open g orbit because already there are there exists an open b orbit uh, which is a homogeneous space and uh, so inside of j uh, of x and x is in the uh, equivariant compactification of G mod H. So the first step is to classify these uh, these uh, possible spherical homogeneous spaces G mod H. So with the same restrictions, with dimension less than or equal to to four and uh, the rank, which is uh, it's actually a G equivariantly birational uh, invariant. So it, it's, it's really uh, the same, the rank of G mod H and the rank of X, uh, rank uh, less than two. So that's the, the first step I will uh, say more about. And the second step is, uh, I mean, the theory of spherical variety of spherical embeddings. This is what involved the, the so the, the colored fans that I mentioned. So given a, a fixed G mod H, so the, the G equivariant embeddings of G mod H inside of X are classified by uh, colored fans. And this, uh, so, so this correspondence makes it uh, possible to, to, to classify, uh, so embeddings of uh, given G mod H, and then you can characterize, I will say more if I have time, when when this embedding is fan or, or locally factorial. So you can work work this, uh, the classification with fixed G mod H from this correspondence. It is uh, not quite easy in general, but for, for low rank, and that, that's the main reason why we consider this low rank. For low ranks, it is doable by hand. For higher ranks, it will it, it can get uh, uh, quite more complicated. Okay, so now I'll give uh, more details, uh, mainly about the, the the first part of the proof. So the 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 main ingredient for this first part is the local structure theorem. And uh, this, uh, this part of the argument was uh, actually essentially in, in, uh, uh, yeah, in, uh, in Johannes' uh, thesis. So we want to use a classical theorem from the theory of spherical 
varieties, which is called the, the local structure CRM. Uh, for this, so before stating this, I, I, I add a standing assumption on our action that and, and group that, that G will be written as a product where there's a torus factor and, and, uh, and another factor, which is uh, semi-simple and simply connected. such that G as C acts on X with finite kernel. So that's a sort of contradicting our statement when we say that we classify faithful actions, but that, that's not really, I mean, that, that's a, a very minor uh, difference when you assume a finite central kernel. And that allows to, to take a group G of this form, which is easier to deal with. And, and the, the, we assume on the, on the Taurus part, we assume that uh, this action is faithful. So trivial kernel. Okay, so, so the, the CRM, the local structure CRM, CRM by Brion, Una and Wust from the, the beginning of the series for varieties really at, at, the, at the, I mean, a, a foundational result. And uh, I, I stated only in a, in a specific case, actually, only on the, the homogeneous spaces. So I have to assume something which can be, we can always arrange this by, by changing the choice of broad subgroups. So I assume that the orbit uh, of the identity concept by the broad subgroup is open in G mod H. Then consider the stabilizer of this uh, open orbit in G. So that is a parabolic subgroup because uh, it contains the, the broad subgroup B. And then the theorem states that uh, there exists a Levy decomposition of P Uh, so P can be written as a pro product of a Levy subgroup times a its unipotent radical such that first um, the the intersection of P with H is equal to the intersection of L with H and contains the derived subgroup of L. And if C is the connected center of L, then we can uh, describe the open orbit via this decomposition as uh, this. So this this map that I'm writing is an isomorphism. Okay, so there's a generalization of this theorem for for uh, uh, some open subsets of any spherical variety which are B-stable. So for small enough such open subsets, you can give a local structure theorem like this. Okay, and that that's also the the basis for a a smoothness criterion. But then you have local models which are more complicated than this uh, coming in. That that's the one of the reason for the 
the fact that the smoothness criterion is difficult. Okay, so but the, the consequences for our our goal is first that uh, I mean this this second point implies that you can uh, rewrite the the dimension of your homogeneous space, which is the thing on which I put a restriction as the dimension of, I mean, very directly via this isomorphism as this sum of dimensions. And this is, this may be interpreted differently. So the dimension of the unipotent radical of P is dimension of G mod P, which is a projective homogeneous variety. And this is nothing else than the, the rank of, uh, of X equipped with this action. So when I put conditions on the dimension and the rank, then I get also uh, conditions on, on this dimension of the, the G mod P. And conversely, I mean, that, that will allow to say something uh, about the, the possible uh, G acting. And then the other consequence, so from, from the first point plus the, our faithfulness assumption is that uh, P cannot contain a simple factor of G. Okay, and then uh, uh, a remark. Uh, G mod P under uh, also under our standing assumption, G mod P is actually G S C mod uh, uh, P cap G S C. So it's actually a homogeneous space under the simply connected semi simple part of G. Okay, so why the, why is it useful? So it uh, it puts a strong restrictions on the possible group acting, on the possible, see, even GSC. Because, uh, I mean, you have like, if, 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 say, if, let me put it on, a, on another slide. So if the dimension of G mod H is equal to four, which is the, the most important uh, case, then say you can uh, argue by a rank. If the rank is zero, then, I mean, that that's actually showing more or less, I mean, it's not uh, very direct from what I wrote, but that's, that's actually saying that G mod H is equal to G mod P, so it's projective homogeneous. Or the thing I said uh, for the first line of the table in the statement. Then, if the rank is one, um, I mean that's you know that the dimension of of G mod P is equal to three, and you know the list of, of such things. Okay, but let's let's uh, let's deal with this later. Let's forget about this right now. So know the list of, okay, let, let me illustrate on the, the next case. Then if the rank is two, then the dimension of G mod P is two as well. And only possibilities are G mod P is P two equipped with the action of SL three or P1 times P1 equipped with the action of SL2 square. And that implies that GSC is either SL3 or SL2 square. And that implies that our group G is, uh, I mean, of the form uh, 
I mean, either SL3 times a torus or SL2 squared times a torus. Okay, rank three implies that then that GSC is equal to SL2 because the only dimension one projective homogeneous space is P1. And if uh, rank is four implies that uh, GSC is uh, trivial, and it means that uh, G is a torus and that's why you recover toric varieties. I'm gonna put four here. Okay, so that's the, the first uh, step is using this local structure CRN to, to impose strong condition on the group acting. And then you have to deal with these cases. So the next uh, steps, I mean, would be parabolic induction. So it's another classical tool in, in spherical geometry, which allows to, to deal with uh, homogeneous spaces kind of inductively. So I write the, the definition. I, I know I'm, I will soon be running out of time, but I, I'd like to give this, even, even if I cannot go much further, I think this, this step is important. So a, a homogeneous space is uh, obtained by parabolic induction if, if it writes in the following way. So it's the quotient of G times another homogeneous space by a, a group uh, Q where Um, Q is a parabolic subgroup, proper parabolic subgroup of G. You have a quotient from, uh, I mean, G0 is a reductive quotient of Q. And uh, the, the quotient is, uh, I mean, Q acts on uh, G times G0 on H0 by, I mean, for this quotient by uh, the following action. So you act by multiplication by the inverse on the right for the, the, the G factor and, uh, and you act through the quotient pi for the, the second factor. So that's a construction of homogeneous, new homogeneous space from, from uh, an, another one. And uh, one key property is that, uh, I mean, this is spherical if and only if the H0 is spherical, or I mean, I should right with the terminology i use i should write the homogeneous space but i guess that's clear and the second thing is that this is detected at lie algebra level so this is a, a homogeneous spaces of this form if you have an inclusion so if this the lie algebra of h is Sandwich between the Lie algebra of Q and the Lie algebra of its unipotent radical. And then uh, our third property, which is uh, where this arrow should lead, is that uh, rank one, rank one spherical are classified. Uh, in general, in full generality, up to parabolic induction. Okay, so the rank one case is kind of dealt with uh, using this. 
So this is a result, a null result by Akiaza. I don't have the the date at hand, but it's it was in the in the eighties. Okay, so so that that sort of gives the the answer for rank one and for rank two. Uh, so since I do not give the we no, do not solve the, the rank three case for rank two, what's the argument? Uh, the the main input sort of is is a result which is surprisingly uh, recent for for its uh, um, was probably possible to do it much earlier, but it seems that it wasn't uh, done at least not uh, published. It's that you can get an explicit classification of least subalgebras of the the two the Lie algebras of the the two groups I have to consider so SL three and SL two square so the classification is up to conjugation and this input makes it uh, I mean you want to classify the 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 subgroups but you sort of have the the candidates for the the Lie algebras and the, the upshot is that most are uh, obtained by parabolic induction, which means that uh, you you go back like to, to the SL2 case or the Torres case that was already, I mean, that is easier to classify at least in small dimension. Okay, and then, but that that's not really finished yet when you, you do this because, I mean, I'm, I'm working here only with subalgebras of the, the GSC. It's like the, the GSC, this thing. Uh, you need to throw in the, the torus factor first. And then uh, even when you have everything up to parabolic induction, you, you still need to classify properly the, the parabolic induction, uh, the, the possible parabolic inductions. So with the restrictions on, on dimension and rank is, is quite doable, but in higher dimensions, it, was, it would soon become a combinatorial nightmare. Uh, so yeah, maybe dimension five with some restrictions would be uh, possible, but it, it gets it quite soon gets uh, hard to deal with. And uh, okay, so I'm, I'm just saying a very quick word in the, in the in the one or two minutes about the, the last step would which would be classifying Fano embeddings. Uh, so I don't I really don't have time to to say much. Let me just put the the main players, the main articles that are used. So most importantly, are works by uh, by Brion. So description of the Picard group of uh, spherical varieties in terms of uh, B-stable divisors. Then in this uh, later paper. Uh, I mean, this is all combinatorial. And in this uh, 1997 paper, Brion describes the anti-canonical divisor inside this uh, uh, combinatorial description. So these are the, the, the main uh, ingredients. And they were given a 
a more uh, polytope uh, interpretation by Gariadi and of Shire in 2015. So you can uh, okay. characterize the, the Fano property more in terms of polytopes using their, their work, even though um, the essential arguments were contained in, in Brion's papers already. And then, uh, so that's to classify Fano embeddings. And then for, for the, the geometric data in this paper as well. So when you have the description of the Picard group, you also can get the Picard number and uh, I mean, uh, Rion also gives a, a formula for the degree of a line bundle on spherical variety in that same paper. And then the last thing that I mentioned was uh, case stability, and that is uh, uh, given by an older paper of mine. You, you can get a combinatorial criterion in the same terms as these for, for case stability of uh, spherical varieties. Spherical fan of varieties. All right, so my, my time's out, so I'll stop here. Thank you for it, your attention.